Well, the closest planet to Earth outside our solar system may not be as suitable to live as scientists once thought. Uh, recently, a large and deadly flare was seen emanating from Proxima b. And now, we normally welcome Andrew Fizekas at this time each Sunday, but instead we're very happy to welcome Paul Delaney, a physics and astronomy professor at York University. Professor Delaney, it's so good to have you here. Uh, tell, us more, tell us more about this recent activity on Proxima b. Well, Proxima Centauri, as you indicated, is the closest star to the Earth, and it has a planet orbiting around it, Proxima Centauri b. Uh, Proxima Centauri itself is a part of a, a category of star that is very, very common in the Milky Way galaxy. It's what we call a red dwarf. And as a consequence, it's become a real focal point, that type of star, to look for planets and thus to look for life, the signs of life uh, that could exist there. The problem with red dwarf stars is that they are notoriously unstable in terms of the amount of flare activity. And the flares, of course, can be deadly. It's like the coronal mass ejections that we sometimes experience here on Earth. Those sorts of stars can give off very harsh radiation. And you and I wouldn't survive them very well. And so that brings into question whether or not the life that could exist on Proxima Centauri B, whether it could survive. So we're looking at these types of environments with greater scrutiny to see, you know, really what is the chance of life existing on these types of planets. Help us understand, if you will, why this great surge to search for life on other planets or places that are suitable for life on other planets, presumably human life that would travel from Earth to these other planets. Why don't we kind of look after what we've got? <laughs> well, that's true. But one of the most fundamental questions that people have been asking for thousands of years is, are we alone? Are we the only life that exists in our galaxy in the universe? And it's got sort of, you know, profound philosophical implications as well as scientific and so on. Uh, so it, it's a big question for people. And, you know, scientists are not trying to, uh, you know, debate the philosophy of it. They're trying to just simply come up with the facts. You know, there is a lot of real estate out there now. For the last 22 years, we've found thousands of exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars, and we've found many of those planets orbiting in what we call the habitable zone, the regions around those stars where life possibly could exist. So we're probing that from afar, sort of it's remote sensing, if you will, trying to ascertain whether or not we can detect life there from here. And oh. at the moment, the answer is we can't, but gosh, we're trying very hard. <laughs> yes. I, I, I kind of think back to those Twilight Zone episodes where uh, we do get the attention of some living species far off in space that comes to Earth and ends up eating us. Scientists have uh, discovered that Earth microbes could survive on Saturn's moon. Learned that recently. What are the ramifications potentially of that? It's along the same theme, uh, you know, just because we look for habitable planets doesn't mean that life can't exist in very inhospitable environments. So for example, on the ocean surface where we have volcanic activity, what we call black smokers, there is an extreme form of life, extremophiles, which survive in that no light, low oxygen, very, very pressurized environment surviving, if you will, on chemicals mm. rather than photosynthesis. We have yeah. now figured out that that can happen inside Enceladus. No life, no oxygen, and as it turns out, no time to continue. Physics and astronomy professor <laughs> at York University, Paul Delaney. Uh, Paul Delaney, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Take care, Brad. You too, my friend. Well, as we round the half hour, a behind the scenes now look at what goes into the launch of a rocket. CTV question period with Evan Solomon here at the top of the hour. I'm Brad Giffen. Enjoy your Sunday.